thing. It was it was like Was it a welcoming environment or was it a was he a taskmaster like don't if you mess this up you're out. I don't have time. There's no second chances or nah, was he kind? No. Nah, we we weren't even worried about him uh as far as firing us. We knew we was good. I mean, we knew we were good. I mean, that cocky thing was serious. You know, uh we knew who we were with. You know, but at the same time, it was like if we blow this, we just blow this. We getting ready to move on to whatever else it is, you know, because yeah. we wasn't, you know, I mean, bands, you got to look at it like this, too. Bands were um, uh, coming up with the attitude of we are bands and we want to be out front. So, you know, a lot of bands were breaking out front and not being just playing behind singers. Right. So um, James Brown was special. We didn't care. You know, I mean, playing behind James Brown, I mean, we we could do that, you know. So it was like, um, um, you know, we really wanted to do this. But if he had said something like, um, yeah, it won't work, you know, we would have not been offended. We would have just moved on. The same thing, Barry Gordy now at Motown. They we walked into the door and they asked who we were. And I wanted to meet James Jameson. And once, you know, we was looking all crazy, you know, that day afro I was telling you about lopsided. <laughs> we had the little John Lennon glasses and, you know, uh, the tie-dyed shirts. I mean, looking crazy, the trip, the trippy thing. And on LSD. So it was like, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, There's yeah. that, so, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> they happened to notice it. I don't know how they noticed it while they were, you know, we standing in the door. When you went to, into Motown, you had to stand in the door. You had to identify yourself. And who did you come to see? So um, once he said, I want, I want to see James Jameson. Who are you? You know, and, you know, oh, I'm Boosie Collins, you know, and I got my band here. It's like they didn't have a clue of who we were. We, this is pre-James Brown. I right. mean, this is, you know, so they have no idea who I am. And I'm thinking I'm everybody. You had you balls, know. man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I still got a lot of balls. But You had a set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm going to go to Motown. Tell them how many balls I got, baby. Patty, you got a mic if you want to use. Just so you know, you got big. Patty, Patty Collins says he got some big ass balls on. Him. You, uh, she won't share them. She don't like to share my balls, but uh, why should she? Yeah. When you catch yeah. a spaceman, you got to hold on tight. Yeah. You know, you think Neil Armstrong was catting around? Oh. No, man. Set foot on the. He touched the moon and said, "All right." <laughs> So you're on the other side of the moon. You're on the dark side looping around, man. You're deep space nine and a half. You're helping me a lot, man. You yeah, you got it. I got your back, man. Okay. You, I got your back. By the way, Bootsy Collins comes in full full regalia. If you're picturing Bootsy Collins right now, it's exactly Bootsy Collins just coming across my front lawn. My neighbors must think I'm casting a John Waters movie. Like the amount of people that come and go, like you know, like Bootsy Collins one day, Steve-O leaves the next. There's construction across oh, the street, oh, and the guys are like, oh, shit, Steve-O, what's up, Holmes? <laughs> like these, these guys didn't give a shit about me ever, but then Steve-O left, and I was the, I was was the, the man. This man. is the house now. <laughs> that lunch truck parks in front of my driveway, and I'm like, you got to park here, man. Steve-O will come out. Oh, man. When yeah. you, I go, if I ever went to... Uh, See Barry Gordy. I yeah. I I went. I would just go to audition for uh that fucking Last Dragon movie. Oh yeah, that that. Was, I'd be like, I yeah, want some of that. That, was that movie you know changed my I, life. I forgot to tell you, they threw us out. I mean, oh. the security guards came. So you go to Barry Gordy's offices at Motown. Yeah. You say, yeah. I'm Bootsy Collins, and I'm here to see James Jameson, who was the Funk Brothers bass player on all of those songs. Yeah. And um, now this is your kindred in your mind. This is your kindred spirit. You're on LSD. You're tripping balls. And this is yeah. my guy like, hey, I'm a bassist. He's a bassist. I'm coming to Motown. Let's do it. I want to meet him. Yeah, what's the know? problem? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it was a serious problem. It was like, you're not fenced in when you're tripping <laughs> out. Just this is it. It's, <laughs> this one, is it. it's one universe under a funk. And they were not having it. No. At all. No. You know? So they threw us out. And, um, you know, um, from that day on, I was like, OK. All right, if if Motown gonna throw us out like that, and then we're gonna have to move on. We have to continue to move on. I mean, so we got used to rejection. Man, fuck Barry Gordy, man. Right, fuck right, him. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, every time something comes out from a man, fuck Barry Gordy. He ain't shit, old ass man. Fuck him. Well, we didn't we didn't go that far. It was it was more like a um, it was more like you know, okay, well they wouldn't give us a deal there. We'll go somewhere else. 
you know. So, so this is you. Who are you rolling around with when you're knocking on doors? This like is this, this is you like your brother. Yeah, me and my brother and Frankie, uh, the drummer, who actually wind up being um, the Bootsy, you know, through the Parliament Funkadelic Bootsy Rubber Band. Waddy. That whole yeah 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 that whole thing. So um, and and we were together. Through the James Brown. Well, we started before James Brown. Yeah, it was pre-James Brown. So you guys are just, you know you're bad. Yeah. And you're just knocking on doors like, we're bad, hire us. Right, right. I I mean, and you're missing (laughs) out. I love it. You're missing out if you don't, you know. And and sure enough, um, a few years later, we hooked up with George Clinton. So it was like, and George was laughing about everybody uh, missed us, you know, and he got us. Laughing to the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, real quick before we forget, you guys got to go online to thefunkuniversity.com. Dot com, baby. Bootsy has an online university. Now, this is no joke. This isn't like yeah. Shannon Doherty with Education Connection. Right. Or like right. Everest College where like it's some guy with his hat backwards on an overpass going, why are you making this difficult, man? <laughs> where people try to yell at you in the middle of the day to get you to go to right. online college. This is an online bass this is guitar real. college. Yeah. Les Claypool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, you, who, you got Stanley Clark, um, Stanley Clark, Jack, Jack Bruce. Bruce. Uh, this is crazy. Yeah. Uh, um, Cash, well, here he is, Frankie Waddy, right yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, Verdi White, John B. Williams, Peanut. You yeah. got Peanut in all there. All Peanuts all over in there. Verdi White. Yep. Earth, yep. Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Cool in the gang. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also Robert, uh, Metallica. I mean, really? So, yeah. So yeah. this is a real deal. This is Funk University, yeah. and I'm holding a pamphlet. Right here in my hands. And I looked this up online. It's on your website, too, which I think is just BootsyCollins.com. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, TheFunkUniversity.com. This is year two. Right. No, year three. Well, look. Corey, come year, on over. Come look, on. man, it says year two right on your own pamphlet, bro. Oh, Patty, that's that's the la- that's the last year thing, baby. Oh, we got no, no, update. no. Blame that on Corey, not on Patty. I'm trying yeah, to help is, you with these balls now. That is Corey. Wow, Corey. Balls. When wow. in doubt, blame come Corey. On, Corey. What's wrong yeah. with you? <laughs> Now, Corey co-founded this with you, right? Yes, exactly. Corey was a child actor. What were you on? I was on the show Beauty and the Beast. Wow. What were you, the Candelabra? I was <laughs> I was Kipper, leader of the Tunnel Kids, and wow. uh, with Linda Hamilton and Ron Perlman. And uh, I was uh, Tom Hanks' son in the Burbs. Wow. And... Uh, and, and then, then you oh, that's right. Now how does <laughs> Oh, I'm learn I'm learning no, new stuff here. Yeah. Boots is like, I just met a white guy to start an online education <laughs> Like, what how do you not know that he was Tom Hanks' Well, kid you know what? Burbs. He just fell out the sky, man. And and right to this day, I always tell him, I don't even know how we met. We just got to talking about the Funk University. Next thing you know, we hooked up. Here's the thing with Funk Un- the Funk University and tweet uh, Bootsy underscore Collins. I was on there today. Good tweets, good follow, but also hashtag more stories. Let them know that I sent you over there. Let them know you're a Morier. Uh, but in this university, you like for real teach people yeah. bass, and there's yeah. like an admissions department. This is like a real up and running. Because when you first hear like Bootsy Collins started an online university a party goes oh well, this is ridiculous but then when you do a lit like literally guys listen six seconds of homework and you'll go oh my god lace right. claypool is yeah. teaching me bass online yeah at the funk it's all it's all up and running it's the real deal and not the deal though and we've been doing it for three years so yeah. it's it's and and one of the things that's really incredible about it is that there's a lot of things that relate beyond just base um about how to live your dreams and about philosophy of of being confident and and being an artist and so yeah. bootsy takes it up a notch you know it's not just for people that have an instrument in their hands right anybody can get something from the school and i like that all the monies go uh they contribute to the sponsors going directly to designated scholarship programs to assist students in need yeah. at funk you yeah. and you're a big proponent of keeping the music in schools that's like a huge huge charity well, that, of yours it, it really helped me when i was coming up um, really yeah because we got a chance to um you know not too many people know this i don't usually tell people that i start off playing clarinet you know uh in school because you know they didn't have guitar you know when nobody teaching you know it's hard to get pussy with yeah. a clarinet man. you know what i'm saying i found that out the hard way yeah and um and, but I had to take something, you know, uh, because 
music, <laughs> music was a <the> thing. <laughs> Come on, man, you're losing it. You're losing it on me, hey, bro. Hey, baby, what's up? No, right. <laughs> on me? <laughs> well, William, but you know what? Call me Bootsy. All this right here? <laughs> <laughs> You know Squidward from SpongeBob? Yeah, that's my joint, man. Oh, clarinet. I played a clarinet. Right, Benny right. Goodman style. What's up? I shouldn't have told you about the clarinet. No, this is great. This oh, is good man. podcasting, man. <laughs> but yeah, um, well, why did you choose clarinet? Well, uh, I tell you exactly why I chose clarinet. It was like, okay, I'm in the uh, sixth grade, and you know, it's like little Bootsy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> but. But the thing that's <laughs> motivating me, but the thing that's motivating me is music, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be like my brother. He's eight years older than I am, and uh, you know I want to play guitar. So I don't have a guitar. I don't have no way of getting one. So I'm figuring like, okay, if I can get into the music any kind of way, I can. <laughs> you know, at some point I'm gonna get me a guitar. I just had that in my mind. So I'll start with the clarinet. <laughs> well. <laughs> it, it didn't come down exactly like that. It was, I kept hearing this stuff coming from upstairs. And there was a guy, an older guy upstairs playing clarinet. And um, I said, uh, one day I went up there and I said, um, I want to play music, you know. And, you know, any suggestions? You know, can you, you know, um, what should I take up in school? You know, um, and he said, well, what do you what do you feel? And I said, well, I, I want to play guitar. He said, well, they don't you know they don't do guitar, and, you know. I said, uh, he said, but um, if you do clarinet, he said, I could help teach you, you know, how to play clarinet, and then you know you can go to summer school, and you know be in the first cl first seat, be a first seat clarinet. Yeah. And I said, uh, well, dang. I mean, I hadn't heard no proposal. Nobody had said right. anything. So it was like. Okay, let me uh and opportunist, but, but, yeah. But but then all the kids was laughing at me because don't nobody want to go to summer school. You know, we want to have fun. You and know? you're like, look, I got an old man above me whose apartment is filled with pussy and he plays clarinet. <laughs> so you guys that's need to exactly, back off. That's exactly what old <laughs> ass man alone with canned goods going, <laughs> I can teach you clarinet. And Bootsy's like, Yeah, <laughs> I'm in. But that sounds know, hot to death. You know, the deep thing is he did. <laughs> He did teach me clarinet. Can you still play clarinet? Uh, no. No, I put that down But a I'm long serious. Time ago. I don't have one here, so don't worry. There's no surprises. But if there was a clarinet and we were, like, backstage someplace, could you pick it up and make it work? Ain't nothing happening. Let me let, let me tell you what happened. Not will. Not uh, not. do you have the will to do it. Could oh, the you will to it? play clarinet? Could oh, you do it? Oh, I could do it. That's tight. I could do That's it. That's cool. You know? But it's like... Um, what was that old man's name? Earl. Earl uh, Carr. I never will forget him. Maximum respect to yeah, Earl Carr. I know, I know we'll Big him. shout out. And and see, what what happened was by him doing that, I winded by him telling me the benefits of practicing right. and going to summer school helped me in my first year in the seventh grade become <laughs> the first C clarinet. And I never knew nothing about clarinet. Never knew nothing about reading music. You know, can but, you read music? Well, it, it, then I could. I mean, for clarinet, right? You know, uh, guitar and all that. I never had any. But uh, you know anything. how to read music. Y yeah. Or you learned. At I that learned. Time. You know. What did your parents do for a living? Uh, well, I had one parent, the, my mother, and um, she did everything she could do for us to, you know, to help us. You know. My point was going to be a lot of it. George Carlin, I saw in a great interview once, said it's all just genetics, like all everything else. Don't yeah, kid nah. yourself. But nah. you meeting that old man, yeah. nine kids, every kid you knew yeah. said nobody goes to summer school. Right. Man. But right. you're the one out of 10 with the genetics, your mother working her balls off right. all to provide, to provide work, work, work. This is how you get ahead. Yeah. You got to work. You would apply yourself. Yeah. You were that one in 10 to go. I am going to study all summer. Yeah. So a lot of kids were goofing off. They were jumping into swimming pools all summer. And, and then I your first party, clarinet. Man. I was the party, man. It was until like, you met that guy that said hard guy. work's the way to do this. Yeah. And it was in your genetics to apply the hard work. That's cool, man. Wow. I never heard it explained. That's to what me. I'm here for. Dr. J, the doctor's yeah, in. Yeah, I'm, it ain't uh, Julius Irving anymore. I'm, I'm I took to his title. The, I'm going to have to lay on your massage couch. JRS1. Give me two or three chicks over there and I'll do it. All right. I'll see yeah. who I can call. <laughs> I'm out of the business, but I'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So... You were at the JB's not a long time, like 11 months. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then you leave, according to my notes, you go back to Cincinnati. Right. All right. Uh, and you, the band is the House Guests? Yep. Okay. Yeah. This is the, 